But now we're gonna put this to work on a gantry style machine where we wanna check not just a surface, but the axes of a machine. In other words, I can set this up and I can check this, I'll call this the X axis with this moving back and forth. I can check the X axis for flatness. I can check the X axis for straightness, okay? I can also, by strategically placing this laser in the right spot, I can also check the squareness of the y-axis. I can check the squareness of the z-axis to the x-axis and the z-axis to the y-axis. A lot of confusion, I know. But these also create a plane as I move this across. So this is a flat plane. We have a flat plane on the laser. I can compare the two and see how flat this plane is. The same way with the X, Y axis, I can move this back and forth and check this whole axis for flatness. I can move this over here, up and down, move this back and forth. I can check the flatness of that axis. So I can check these flatnesses, the straightnesses, the squarenesses, all with this laser setting in one spot. And if I need documentation, we have a software program that will calculate all this and give us the squareness of all these axes uh, combined. All right, let's get started. First off, like I mentioned before, I need to strategically place this laser where I can make all of these checks in one spot. So I need to find that spot. The one thing we have to remember when we're setting up, we want, we want to be able to check this x-axis this way. We want to be able to check our y-axis this way, our x-axis this way. So I need to be able to have a beam and all, a, a target in all three of these beams. So I'm gonna set this back here a little bit. I'm gonna take a base and a rod and a target. And I'll stick it through the base. And as you can see, I've set the base down. I have the target hanging out from the side of the base. The base has holes in it so we can do that, so we can orient the target. Now I'm gonna adjust the target by loosening the thumb screw, adjust the target out until the laser's in the center of the of the target or close to the center. Okay, now I have to do a course alignment. And I also, I wanna make sure that I have clearance here. So I'm gonna take a second base. And I'm gonna put this on here. And if I put a short piece, and as you can see, I'm way too close. So, I have to move this whole stand back out. Okay, now I have plenty of, plenty of room. I can make my checks. Okay, now we're gonna move on and we're gonna do a two point buck in just like before, the same procedure. But to begin with, I have to do a course alignment. What I mean by a course alignment is a visual alignment. Get this back to the center now that I've moved this. Now I'm gonna move this to the far end. And when I'm on the far end, you can see that the, the laser beam is way to the top of the target. So I'm gonna loosen the magnetic base and I'm gonna turn it. It's way too far for the azimuth adjustments in that short distance. And I'm gonna go a little bit beyond that because this is a remote situation. Back to the center. Now I know I'm gonna hit the target on both ends. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn the laser on. I'm gonna start the program. And I'm gonna make target number one zero on this point. 
and then I'm gonna take my measurements. And so, I'm zero on the near point. I have my molar plier. I'm gonna move this to the far point. Far point, I'm minus 66. Bring it back to the near point. plus 1,000. So now I'm bucked in to the x-axis in this direction. Now I want to set up a target and I want to buck into x-axis this way using the pitch adjustment. So I'll be bucked in both ways. Eventually what we're going to do is what we call a five-point buck in. A three-point buck in and a two-point buck in combined, we refer to that as a five-point buck in. Meaning I'm going to have this plane, this side vertical plane parallel to the x-axis and I'm gonna have the, the top plane, the horizontal plane, parallel to the x-axis and the y-axis. That will create a, I can be able to check the plane of the x-y-axis and the straightness of the x-axis. Then from there, we'll go on. I wanna get this so it's in the center of the target. And I'm going to turn that turret on. So I'll make target number two zero. And now I'm going to take this to the far end. My far reading is minus 216. To the near point. Plus 34 thousandths. So now I'm bucked into this way and this way. Now I want to bring this over here and I want to buck into the y axis this way. This is going to create this plane. So here we'll make that zero. Bring this over here. And now using the roll adjust, I'll tilt this in this direction. My zero. Zero. And zero. First off, let's make a check of the straightness of the x-axis. So I just like to move this in certain increments. increments. So here I'm, you know, I'm reading uh, minus six thousandths. Minus, I'm looking at target number one now. This is target number one. Minus nine thousandths. Minus six thousandths. And back real close to zero, a thousand. So we can see, because it's a minus number, we can see this bows in on the side. On a machine, we could actually go in there and straighten that out. These are live numbers. I can move this in these increments and straighten that out. Okay, let's check the flatness of the XY plane. Here, the target's standing up. So a plus number means it's high. A negative number will mean it's low. Here, we're gonna make target number two zero. Here I'm at plus eight thousandths. Again, I'm looking at target number two. I keep the target aimed back at the turret. I know this is rising up. Come here, plus 14, minus one, plus six. I can move this over to the middle. And again, I went up to plus six. Plus six, minus nine, minus 17. What I'm looking for here more is roll though. Some of this issue is because this table has some roll in it or this machine has some roll in it. So 
I'm gonna, not gonna get good repeatability because of twist. So we may have to, when you're setting up the machine, uh, this is another thing that I like to mention to people, the base of the machine is the heart of the machine. If the base isn't right, the rest of the machine is never gonna be right. You can't make it right above the base. The base is, that's, it's like trying to walk with no feet. If the base isn't right, or you have a short leg, you're not gonna be able to walk right. The base has to be right. So, if I was to go in and check a machine, that's the first thing I do is I, I would check this X, Y axis. And if this isn't right, my squarenesses will never be right. They'll be different in every position that I move it to. I'm gonna come over here where I'm zero, and I was zero on that side, or real close to that. But when I come over here, you see that corner drops off 40 thousandths, 38. So that's a big issue. A couple of thousandths I wouldn't worry too much about, but 38 thousandths, this has a big role in it. I'd have to fix that before I can really give you accurate squareness checks. So we know now that it's not too bad straightness wise, but there's a big, a big role in this base. So now we're gonna check the, the squareness of Y. In order to do that, now I have to change my targets around. Okay, now I'll turn that beam on. Zero target number two. Okay, now not only can I check squareness, but I can also check straightness. If I move this in increments, we're way out, 20 thousandths. 61. And we know we're way out of square. This machine cannot give me a good part. No way. So, but that's how we check it. But now because I have the target here hanging in this direction, I can also check the Z axis to be square to the X axis. See, I'm here, I'm, I'm zero. I can move this up into increments. plus 43, now because it's plus, it's leaning this way. Plus 88, yeah, this machine, maybe is ready for the scrapyard. Plus 120. So now we've checked Y to X, and we've checked Z to X. Now we can set up and check Z to Y, meaning this direction. Again, I have to change targets around. This here. Because I'm checking this direction, I need to be in this plane. So, move this out. Now I'm using target number one. So I'm gonna zero that on this point. Then I'm gonna move this up in increments. So we're also gonna check the straightness as well as the squareness. And plus 63. Plus 69. Plus 78. Okay, so now we've checked the flatness of X, Y. We've checked the flatness of Y, the Y axis. We've checked the straightness of X. We've checked the straightness of Z, all the squarenesses. What we haven't checked is the planes. So in this, with this setup, I can move this down here and that would become a wall. So in other words, I could measure down here, measure that whole straight line. Then I could move this up and make measure that whole wall, so on and so forth. 
doing the same thing with x, y. I can check this whole plane to see how flat that plane is. But there's no sense in doing it at this point because we know there's so much roll in this base that it, it, we're just wasting a lot of time. On an actual machine, you check that base, you have a good base, then you want to see how flat those planes are because the, the problem can be in the axes. So, we have this set up to be parallel to the machine. Now I can simply take a target and change in the height. I'm gonna turn off these other two beams. Okay, moving on. I've set the target at that height. I'm gonna make that target read zero. And now I can move this base to any place on this, on this surface and see how parallel we can see here. This is way low compared to the machine. I can also check the flatness of this surface. Minus 60. Here's another reason that this rail is running downhill is this whole table runs downhill more, even 82. But that in a nutshell is how we do a gantry, how we set it up and, and make all the squareness checks. And you can see, you, know, you have to rearrange your targets. You have to use a little bit of imagination. That includes the gantry setup.